Welcome to session 16, Youth and Fans, where they see the 2021 world happening ahead. And um, I'm very glad, though evidently I've gotten very fuzzy. I don't know what to do about that. Um, oh, there I go. I'm very yeah. glad to be introducing this panel led by Storm Glore with a group of creative entrepreneurs, heavy duty fans, heavy duty creators, heavy duty entrepreneurs. Storm, take it away. Oh, thank you, Gigi. And let me start by asking all those of you who are in Hop in in the Hop in chat. We really want this to be. Uh, a, we want to include a lot of audience participation. So, for right now, especially if you're Gen Z, say hi in the chat. Introduce yourselves and let us know you're out there because we're going to come back to some questions, uh, not only for the panelists but for everyone to answer about what they're thinking about the uh, the, the music world ahead of us. So. If you're Gen Z, uh, chime into the chat because we're going to come back to you. Um, and uh, let me say this. We've got an all-star cast here of, of college students. And um, one thing they have in common is that they have done cool things in their communities. So I'm going to ask them to introduce themselves one by one. And I want them to share not only their background, but, but mention those things that they've been doing in their communities, because it's all really special work, and we admire them for that. So we'll start with Celia. Celia Thompson, take it away. Yeah, thank you, Storm. Um, and yeah, I'm Celia Thompson. I am a junior at UTSA here in San Antonio um, and studying communications and music. Um, and then I also work as a part-time at a music nonprofit here in San Antonio called Musical Bridges Around the World. Um, so basically what Musical Bridges does is we get artists from around the world, especially from countries that might be like underrepresented or misunderstood and try to, you know, create these connections through music and culture and, you know, show that side of them to the community here in San Antonio. So, um, yeah, I'm, I love working with them. I interned with them before and um, super excited to be a student and a um, worker at a nonprofit and try to, you know, create connections there. So thank you. Awesome. Thank you for that introduction. And Edwina Maven. Yeah. Hi, everyone. My name's Edwina. I am about to graduate from CU Denver. I have gotten a recording arts degree there. And I'll be graduating in three weeks, which is wild. Um, but in addition to being a student, I'm also a partner artist at this nonprofit called Youth on Record here in Denver. I specifically work in their program called Fem Powered, and we provide free workshops and education to young creative femmes in the area. Um, I've been with them for about two years now. I started as a participant, and it's been awesome getting to actually work there now. In addition, I am also a board member of a nonprofit called Music Minds Matter, also in Denver. And we're trying to just create more space for a discussion on mental health within the Denver music scene. Awesome, thank you. And hello, Sydney. Hi everyone, my name is Sydney. Um, I am currently a sophomore at the University of Nebraska. I am in the Johnny Carson Center for Emerging Media Arts. And recently I put together this online concert festival for unsigned artists to get exposure in front of music executives and fans and anyone in the industry that could help further that artist's career. Fantastic. Citrus Fest was awesome, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. Great job. I enjoyed it. And last but not least, Weiler Harmon. Weiler. Hey, everybody. Um, my name is Weiler. I am from Birmingham, Alabama, and I am now a senior up here at Ohio University in Athens, Ohio where I am about to graduate with a degree in music production and recording industry. Um, here at OU, I am the A&R director at our on-campus record label. So what Brick City is, is it is a student organization, but also a senior capstone course. So anyone that is in the MPRI, music production recording industry program at Brick City, uh, takes this class or uh, club pretty much. And what we do is sign for local artists or Ohio regional artists um, each year in the fall and then work with them throughout the year to uh, produce four projects that release in the spring along with the music video and along with promoting other local artists um, around Athens. So one of the cool things we did this year was actually within three months put on 
nine live streamed uh, shows with about 30 different artists. So it's been a roller coaster to do it all through COVID and uh, kind of oversee the label like that. But it has been a very rewarding process and it's all coming to fruition because our fourth and final EP releases tomorrow night. So oh, wow. I'll drop all the links in here. There you go. Let's do some marketing awesome. while we're here. Okay. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Well, all of you have had to cope with uh, the pandemic in, in a number of ways, but, you know, we're looking ahead with this conference and, and I'm going to ask you all some questions about what you're thinking. And I'm, I'm going to let you all just, whoever wants to take a stab at the answers, whatever they think, just shout it out. But we're going to talk about, the, you know, what you all are thinking. But uh, again, I also encourage you, all of you in the chat, we've got some Gen Z's out there and, and, um, uh, and others, and, and we'll, we'll appreciate your comments in the chat too, what you're thinking. So let's start with something, probably the most obvious question. How ready or how comfortable are you in getting back to live shows? Anyone wanna give me a time estimate for that or, or what it will depend on? What do you think? I think for me personally, um, it would probably take maybe the CDC announcing that it's safe or safer to go to concerts. I know that there's a few concert, upcoming concerts like Rolling Loud that are big that a lot of people are going to go to, but I don't know if I necessarily would feel that safe going to them yet. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Yeah. To add to that, I feel like there is a lot of like excitement within me and even just starting to like slowly go back to some of those spaces ton of excitement. And then like two seconds later, there is a little bit of this nervousness. Like, is it okay to be back here? Are we ready for this? Um, so a little, a little, a little hesitant for sure. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what, Edwin, I'm going to follow up with your comment because as a performer, I, 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 how do you, how are you feeling? Is that any different? It's pretty much the exact same of like this excitement and, um, also this readiness to, to like start practicing for a performance instead of just kind of to practice. Um, but again, there is, there's that hesitant feeling that kind of like creeps in a couple seconds later. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All well, right. I, Any, anyone else? Celia? Yeah, sorry. I was going to say I'm, I'm ready and I feel like, you know, I'm lucky enough to be vaccinated. Um, so I think if artists are ready to perform, I'm ready to go out and hear them because it has been such a tough year for artists and, you know, to provide them with that audience and the connection that they need as well as, you know, for me to, to stimulate my soul through music. Um, mm -hmm. as, as soon as they're ready to go out and perform, I'm, I'm ready to hear them, so. Mm -hmm. Great. Wyler, you want to jump in or are you good? Yeah, sure. So last night we actually just had our end of the year show for um, Brick City Records where all of our artists film, uh, played a 40 minute set about and we did not live stream this one. We just filmed it and we're gonna release it soon, but the concept is that we kind of just use whatever capacity uh, the state will allow us and the school will allow us. And we are lucky enough to have some really great large facilities in Athens. Um, so we had about 20 people in a 300 person theater last night that are, were spread out. Um, and then earlier in the year when we did those live stream shows, we did a lot of them live streamed from the same location. We we're just allowed 10 people in the theater. Um, so I think that it, a lot of people are ready to go back and, you know, that's what we've seen in Athens and stuff, but I think it's just going to look a little different for a while. And I think it's going to be a, obviously a lot harder for those larger acts to navigate it because it's a lot easier to have small 20 person shows than it is to have, you know, 1,800, 2,000 people in a normal size venue. Yes. Well, uh, that that's a good point, Weiler. And, and someone mentioned in the chat, you know, this certainly is going to depend on the region you're in. We have four students who are from all parts of the country, so it, it could vary by local regulations and and, uh, and and all of that. So, so thanks for sharing that. Okay, next question, and 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 uh, I I love all the comments in the chat here. Uh, keep them coming, you all. And uh, I want to know about your your music habits. How if how if, as as consumers, how have they changed uh, since prior to the pandemic till now? as music consumers, how, how is it different now? Anyone? I think I'm just going a little more out of my way to uh, find new music than I would normally would. Um, just because, you know, 
you almost feel guilty for the artists that aren't getting to perform right now. So you kind of want to discover as much new music as you can and support them through streaming and engaging with them on social media and stuff like that. Um, so I think that as a consumer, it's just made me more active, honestly. Hmm. Okay. And right. I would say similar to what Weiler said, um, I've been seeking out new artists and also kind of smaller or emerging artists. Um, Cause so like as a music student, we're, we're given a lot of opportunities to watch, you know, the symphony and the, you know, operas. And um, for me, it's important too to, to seek out the people who aren't as well known maybe and who might be even more active on social media and, you know, follow them and interact more. So I feel like there's been a lot more opportunity to be interactive and to see a little bit of their personal lives as well and get to know the artists like that. So. Mm -hmm. I agree. And during quarantine, I really had nothing better to do than just look for new artists and see them perform. So that's pretty much what I did during quarantine. A way to spend it. <laughs> yeah, I also, this is a little bit more from maybe an artist or music creative sp perspective, but I feel like just having all this time away from live music also made me focus on learning more about streaming and learning more about uh, live streaming too as artists and how that has sort of grown within the last year. Um, I feel like it really opened the space for just a bunch of Google searching of like, how does this work in music and what can we do with it? But, yeah. Yeah. Great. Thanks for adding that. And someone in the chat asked about virtual concerts and I'm, I'm assuming the translation is what did y'all, what was y'all's experience with virtual concerts? What do you think at this point? Anyone want to tackle that one? I think it's really tough. Um, we, we, we did nine, like I said, in three months and it, it was interesting to see the engagement with it when it is something that I think, I think one of our problems was that we did so many of them. Um, and so the engagement kind of starts dropping off after five or six. But I think if you have one isolated show that is well promoted and, you know, is, is set far ahead, then I think that they can be majorly successful because that's what we saw with our first few that we really put a lot of work to promote um, in. Mm -hmm. Well, Sydney, you you put on an entire festival. What are you, what are you thinking after that experience? Mm -hmm. I think at the beginning, many people like the online stuff, but as it goes on, they get bored of it. More and more of those concerts happen. They want to see something. They want to go in person and experience what they did before COVID happened. Mm -hmm. To piggyback off of that, oh my bad, Storm. I was oh, going to go say ahead, to piggyback off to, off of that. Um, I think it would be really cool to see kind of virtual concerts figure out how to have more engagement rather than just someone staring at their screen. Mm -hmm. um, things like or websites like Twitch, where you can actually see people, you know, not only chatting but like tipping and doing these like crazy animations on screen and stuff. I think that adds to an engagement, which obviously will not replicate what it is like to be in a live audience, but something that is a little bit more than just staring at a screen and having a chat option, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And I can also say that on my live stream, which was on Twitch and YouTube, many of the feedback was happy that I had that interaction with the audience. Yeah, and for Musical Bridges, who I work with, of course, we've also had a year of virtual con um, concerts and programming and, you know, had all of the challenges that come with that and have been similarly trying to figure out how to keep our audience engaged. And we've been trying to introduce, you know, more of a live element and having, you know, more interviews with the artists and putting a little, you know, more of a personal touch than if you went to a concert and you only saw them on stage. Um, so, you know, there's pros and cons because you see, you get things you wouldn't have before in a live setting, but you're also missing out on, on some of the, the live connection, so. Great, great, these are great comments. Um, let's switch a little bit. We're gonna have a panel about music jobs and, and how that outlook has changed, but I wanna particularly hear from you all as students how have your career plans been affected by the, by this pandemic? And and I know that some of you are planning to study music, but maybe you aren't. But so you don't have to limit it to music itself. But 
How have your career plans been affected by this? I think to start, I would say it was somewhat of a learning lesson as to like maybe aim for a direction more than a destination with when I think about music jobs in the sense that I have found work with some of these nonprofits in the area. But when I first went to school, I definitely had like this very set, like, oh, I'm going to do this. And then next year I'll have this down. And, you know, with the pandemic, some of that happened, but a lot of it, I think was more of like a learning lesson of, again, aim for a direction, maybe more than a destination. Mm. A direction more than a destination. Appreciate that insight. Anyone else? Um, yeah, and I think as, as Edwina said, but as, as people who are involved in music and the arts, um, you know, a huge part of that is being creative and being flexible and being ready to pivot at any time. Um, cause if we can't stay current, then, you know, what's the point? And so for me, um, my career path hasn't really, you know, I haven't had one exact narrow path that I'm hoping to go down, but, um, I've always wanted to be involved in music in some way. You know, I think possibly it's changed more to instead of a performer to be more of an advocate. And this last year has taught me a lot about the value of networking. And I've met a lot of cool new people who I wouldn't have met mm -hmm. pre-pandemic, you know, without this virtual element. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm still definitely hoping to work within music and to increase my role as an advocate and as a point of connection between you know, right now it's between students and the music community, but between any, you know, points to make the, the community stronger. Mm -hmm. Very good. Very good. Anyone else on that one? Um, right. I don't think oh. my career path has changed much, but for me personally, I started getting into music recently and during COVID, it was kind of hard to get more of that experience that you want. So I had to basically go on different paths to figure out what I actually wanted to do. And um, online concerts, online Zoom meetings has helped me figure out that I do want to continue on this path. Mm. Oh, thank you for sharing that, Sydney. It's great. Well, we yeah, I think that. similar to, go I'm sorry, oh, I'm sorry. I just think okay. similar to what C Celia said that it just kind of made me more open-minded to and, and more adaptable is the biggest word I think is just that with everything ever changing in the industry and in, in the world right now, honestly, it's just, I think that my, my willingness to do a lot of random jobs in the industry has, has grown. Um, I think that I'm more open-minded as to what kind of, what kind of career path I would take in the music industry. I just know that I want to be involved in, in some capacity. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Awesome. Well, a few minutes ago, I asked you how your your consumer choices and preferences with music have changed during the pandemic. Well, what do you think's ahead? What 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 do you think you will be like as a music consumer in you know the rest of twenty twenty one and into twenty two? Maybe even assuming that you're going to be back at shows. What what do you think you'll be like as a music consumer? More streaming, less streaming, podcasts, whatever. You can go any direction with this. I think that even before the pandemic, I think the industry is kind of getting close to a tipping point of going back to more grassroots marketing and interaction between artists and their fans and kind of moving away from just like putting all your marketing money into like Instagram ad campaigns and stuff like that. So I think that we're going to see like the value of face-to-face -face interaction, whether it be through marketing or just, you know, meeting greets at, at shows and stuff like that. I just think people are longing for, you know, in-person interactions. Mm -hmm. So I think that's that's going to be the biggest change in the industry is that I, I, I can see that live streams, live streaming shows keeps getting bigger and stuff. But I think that eventually people are just going to have to move away from that and go more in person focused. Hmm. OK. Yeah. To go off of that, I'm kind of curious about what elements from the past year will kind of continue to grow into as we go back into our live settings. I especially am curious to see how you know, maybe live streaming of shows will become more of an option for people who aren't physically able to be there or who choose not to be there. Um, I'm curious to see how long that timeline will extend and how how present that is as we go back into our live music. 
Thank you, Edwina. Yeah, um, similarly, I, I see a lot of good things that we could carry over from what we've learned in the last year. And I don't want to make any calls about what the future is going to look like and then, you know, look back at this and laugh at how wrong I was. <laughs> yeah, we are being recorded. Um, and I always say I'm going to uh, rub the crystal ball and predict it. But anyway, no, we, yeah. no, no one knows. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, but it, it, it definitely will be interesting and... Yeah, I, I just want to stay open-minded and um, be ready with the changes. I do think um, some changes are possibly overdue, as, as Weiler said. Um, you know, there are things within music that maybe needed to change, and this has kind of forced that to happen, possibly not on the timeline we imagined. But, um, you know, there's there's definitely a silver lining in it. I don't want to um, minimize how hard this time has been, especially for artists, but... Coming out of this, you know, many artists and producers who are maybe, you know, asset lean and, um, you know, not not the huge establishments. Many of the smaller people are coming out better off because they were able to adapt. And so I, I do kind of hope that can carry over into the future. And mm -hmm. yeah, we'll see. Okay. All right. Sydney, anything to add there? I definitely think live streaming will continue but I don't think anything will ever top live music. And I think it's only up for here, from here for music. Mm -hmm. Very good summation there. Thank you, Emma, uh, Sydney, sorry. <laughs> um, well, uh, you know, we've got a few minutes left and uh, there's a lot of conversation I can't even keep up with in the chat. So certainly you all have generated a lot of input and comments out here. So we appreciate this. Um, I'm going to I'm going to make this sort of the last question. But uh, in general, just in general, uh, maybe in a few words, just describe to me from whatever perspective you'd like. How are you feeling about the next 12 months, 12 to 15 months or so? What are your, what are your thoughts on that? Oh, I feel, oh, oh go ahead, Sydney. Okay. Um, I feel pretty good. I think more and more people are getting vaccinated. There's going to be more live concerts. More people are going to go out. So I'm, I'm pretty happy and feeling good about these next 12 months. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah, I was going to say overall optimistic, but still a little cautious. Cautiously optimistic. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Okay. I would See agree you? with right. Weiler. I would agree with that. Cautiously optimistic is a, is a very good way to put it. I think that it's an exciting time. Um, like we said, I think there's so many new avenues for exposure and revenue and just interaction now in the music industry um, and media in general. Um, and I think it's going to be interesting to see which one of those comes out on top and uh, which one is the most beneficial to both the musician and the consumer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah. And I'm optimistic as well. Um, and just having heard a couple of the different panels and conversations with this conference, um, I'm very excited. There's so many new ideas, so many great, you know, innovator, innovators and music people starting conversations that I'm really excited to see where it goes in the next month. So. Mm -hmm. Great, great. Well, I said that might be the last question, but uh, it's not uh, because I am an educator and I, I do want to ask, you know, uh, if you could describe for us, you know, as, as far as music education and education in general, where you're at now in your own, you know, environment, are you taking classes through Zoom or, or whatever, and how you're feeling about your education at this time and, and the road ahead for your, for that. Anyone want to tackle that one? I could start. I think, oh. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Edwina. Go ahead. I was going to say, so I have been on online classes for like the last year, and I'm sure my other three fellow panels have too, but it's been interesting in the sense that I, I've noticed a lot more of like independent study, at least um, for my classes in the sense that we're not really having tests as much because you can just Google everything with tests online, but I've noticed more of like, you know, look into this and maybe write a paper on this or 
um, on my own, just again, like talking about my random Google searches of how does live streaming work? Where is the revenue with it? Um, yeah, I, I've noticed more of an independent study, I think, in my last year of online classes, for sure. Mm, okay. Yeah, similar to what Edwina said, I think that there's starting to become a more an emphasis on real world experiences. Um, I know OU has a lot of classes that, you know, work with Bonnaroo or go to South by Southwest or do other activities like that that give people real world experience in the industry. And I think the perfect example of that is Brick City because it is a, a capstone course. So I, we've just been saying how lucky we are to have that this year and teach us. I think the biggest thing that we've all learned this year is that we need to be adaptable and nothing teaches you to be adaptable, like having to operate a record label completely virtually um, record, um, with COVID precautions and have shows with COVID precautions and all that. So I think the emphasis on real world experience will continue to grow. Um, especially once kids are back in the classroom and stuff. Great. I can only imagine with a student run record label at this point, what those challenges have been, but you'll know how to run a label after going through all this, right? Sure. Yeah. All right. Anyone else? Um, All right. Go ahead. See you oh, sorry. Yeah. It's being, being online and being mostly asynchronous has kind of freed me up to do more work. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of how I was able to intern here at Musical Bridges and then get this job. So super grateful for that. We are, I'm a junior, so we are going back in the fall, they're saying. So it's going to be interesting to see, you know, how the, the life, work, school, study balance shifts maybe at that point. But mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's been good. It's it's had definitely had its perks. All right. Anything else to add? I also agree with Celia. As the online classes helped me put together Citrus Fest, I wouldn't have nearly had as much time as I had to put it all together. But I'm also ready for regular classes to come back. Great, great. Well, all of you are superstars. I know that I reached out to all of you. And again, because you're doing so many things in your community, and that could be a whole nother conversation, as we say in the South. But thank you for all you do for your, your, your programs and your communities. And thank you for being part of the panel today. Let's thank give you. it Thanks up. so much for having us. Thank you so much. Yeah, people, everyone give it up for our great panelists. Thank you. We'll see everybody in two minutes. <laughs>